that we should be live. George, what's going on with you? Good, good. I mean, um, I kind of left my dental sales job, so I'm looking for another uh, gig, but I'm still training with the with the techniques. Okay. Why did you leave it? Uh, they just didn't have their marketing. They didn't have their marketing. I kind of yet. Left my dental clients. Uh, they just didn't have their marketing. They didn't have their oh, marketing. Yet. Left my dental they didn't have the marketing. The marketing was inconsistent to bring in uh, people in the door. Mm. So what are you doing now? Looking for a new gig. What else are you doing under looking for a new gig? Um, just, you know, uh, not much. Just trying to figure out where the next move is. Yeah. Are you making any money? Are you doing anything? No. Shit. Sure. No, right I'm at a stalemate. You're at a stalemate. Shit. Sure. Anything in the pipeline? Well, I've applied for a couple of positions, um, but just waiting to hear back. Okay. We'll probably be waiting. <laughs> yeah. we'll be waiting. You and 10 other people are probably going for what you're going for. So this is why it's very, very important, all of you guys, um, to be able to build your relationships in the market because when one thing goes down, you have enough people in your corner that can push you in somewhere else. Yeah. John Ambrose, what's going on with you, party boy? Where have you been? I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, it's uh, just, just been around. <laughs> been around. How's your sales career going? Uh, it's it's interesting. Um, I've been doing I've been doing some solar sales. I've been involved in life insurance and insurance sales as well. Anything come to fruition? Uh, not really. That's why I'm here looking at still still following you. Sure, following me is not enough. <laughs> You yeah, gotta, I know. You got to you got to put it into action. Hey guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, there's like 15 of you guys watching it on the Facebook. Um come on through, come on in. Don't watch it on Facebook because I can't answer any of your questions there. So, if you want a hand, if you want anything, come and let us know uh so then we can obviously help. I I can I can I can tell you where I'm at right now. No so, one knows or cares where you are, Elroy. Yeah, true. But um, I. Elroy gets muted. I don't even know who Elroy is. Okay, who's got some questions? Let's let's help as much as I possibly can for the next twenty five minutes. Oh, Neville Ross, put on a camera, guys, if you can, so I can actually see you. And I know you're people. Thank you, guys. Let's figure out some stuff. Who's got some questions? I know we had some questions based on urgency, based on how do you future pace, based on obviously how do you build up enough uh, equity in the conversation to be able to consequence. Who's got some questions? I got 20 minutes, guys. Okay. Well, I want to help you in terms of building on my finals. What are you, who's Elroy? Elroy, what is going on with you, my friend? I don't even know who you are. You got a mute, buddy. You got to take your turn. Right. So I'm going to ask Elroy because I don't know who he is and he's talking about funnels. I don't build funnels. <laughs> what is going on with this? Man? Let's get him out of here. Sorry, Elroy. You got to go. Hey, hey, Bill. It's right. Brooke. What's going on? I'd, I'd like to talk to you today. Uh, you talked about urgency being one of the things you wanted to cover. Um, in my offer, I'm working with people, helping them get into consulting roles by helping them improve their resumes and, and cover letters and interview skills. Okay. So with, I'm working with a lot of people that have uh, long-term plans that this process can take four months, five months to be able to complete. Yeah. How do I encourage them to sign up now as opposed to waiting You know, that three or four months when the process really officially kicks off? Um, it's kind of like, when was the best time to learn how to swim? Is it waiting until you get in the deep end and you're fucking trying to survive and not die? Or is it actually before you get in the pool? Yeah. So it's it's really, you know, coming from that approach, and this is where I try to bring into it, 
if you start early, you're able to begin your networking properly. If you get an opportunity to interview, you won't be caught off guard and you won't be in a panic because you'll be prepared and ready. Yeah, you're trying to persuade somebody there instead of asking someone questions that ultimately allow them to persuade themselves. So Absolutely. what I would do, very, very simple like this, I would ask a person, can I ask, when was the best time to plant a tree? 50 years ago. Okay, when was the second best time? Today. Okay, so why are you waiting? Because at the end of the day, you want to get to said result. If you don't do the work to get to said result, and you keep putting it off and off and off, how will you ever achieve your outcome and your goals? You just can't, can you? No. no. So what would be more important for you to put this off or actually do the work right here, right now, and actually commit to your future? Because believe me, I've heard it all. You know, I've been in a situation where people always put things off. And when people put things off, what happens? Everything else. How many times have you told yourself that you're going to be fit again every single year, but then Monday rolls through and something else happens? So the biggest question I got to ask you is, is you getting to your outcome the most important thing in your life right now? Because if it's not, you know, the journey that you're going to go on to actually achieve it is not going to be worth the squeeze. See how I'm always focusing it back on to the outcome? Absolutely. I'm always, I'm always laying it into hopes, analogies, and frameworks that are ultimately designed to get the person forward thinking, which is outcome-based. Yeah. See the difference between you trying to convince somebody that it's the right time rather than me asking questions that will ask yourself that. See the yeah, that's that's a massive uh, frame of, of perspective. I really appreciate that, Bill. You know what I mean? Because it's like we can we can we can ask and we can coach and train and actually tell people when the best time is. But if they don't tell themselves, then what's going to happen? If they decide to join, that's when your refunds are going to come through and, and uh, not complete the programs. Yeah, because they're not bought on it. They're not sold on it. They're not sold on themselves doing the work, which is an issue. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Does that right. help everybody else? See how we can start to create urgency? But this is an upstream issue as well. This is what I want to talk about today is how you ask the right question that ultimately put people in a position where they want to make a decision. Yeah. Okay, George, go for it, buddy. Bill, um, when I was selling dental and and we were getting a client in and on a consultation, they said they have dental problems, they're wearing dentures. They'd meet with the doctor. Once we would do the financing, once we'd come to the treatment, say the treatment was 45000 Well, they would say, oh, my God, I don't know how I can afford that. I'm living on Social Security disability. And I said, well, we have options. If you don't have cash, not a problem. We have options. We can look in financing, right? So even if they get approved on the financing, their mentality in the dental world was, well, I'm just getting a quote from you. So yeah. I'm going to go to the next guy, get a quote, next guy, get a quote. How, yeah. do you, how do you stop that in an industry where that's the norm? Yeah. Okay. So if it is the norm, then you've got to press into it. It's like when someone comes to me and says, like, I have a guy, James Caulfield, couldn't fucking understand what the hell was going on, which is perfectly normal. His job is putting fucking windows and doors in. I said, if people are going to do exactly what you're afraid that they're going to do, guess what's going to happen when it happens? You're going to fucking freeze up, you're going to fall apart, and you're just going to say to yourself, this is just how it is, and I'm never going to make sales. So if the fucking outcome on a consistent basis is they're always going to press on and they're always going to get quotes, I want to bring that to the conversation because that's the objection. If I don't bring the real objection to the conversation, how can I ever fucking overcome it? Okay, so what I want to do and what I want you to do is think of it like this. Now, I know you're going to say to me that you want to go away and you want to get as many quotes as you possibly can. Now, what is going to happen? That person is going to say, yeah, that's exactly how I feel if I give you a smoke screen. Now I can overcome it. Why? Because now they presented exactly what's going on in their head. So if you constantly see it on a daily basis, then bring it to the conversation. Because if you bring it to the conversation, then you're there to help the person rather than sell the person. How do you address um, a patient that says, when I sat in your office, George, your, your treatment coordinator presented the treatment, it was 50, 51,000. But the guy was like a salesperson. He said, well, I didn't, I didn't see anything that made me want to pull the trigger 
but he's like, if, if it was 51,000, he's like, I think he told my treatment coordinator that, you know, I have 40,000 in cash. I said, I said to him, well, that's amazing. Right. So if you have $40,000, would you pull the trigger? He goes, no, I want to, I want to, I still want to go talk to other dentists. Yeah. I think about it. Yeah. I want to think about it. Right. And I personally didn't know how to overcome that because I think it's true that I needed to probably say in that conversation, Hey, I know you're going to talk to other, other dentists, but I feel like I'm going to lose that because I texted him price for its quality. So I said, everything's in-house. I'm going to give you the best surgeons, best dentists. There's no misinformation going to come, come your way when it comes to our facility. If you go somewhere else, it's price versus quality. Yeah, they might be cheaper, but you don't know what you're getting. Sure. And I think that that's was like- That's how you stop the whole concept of shopping around because you you create doubt. But I think yeah. for you, first off, I think you're shopping and I think you're fishing in the wrong pond. Because if you're trying to sell a $50,000 process to someone on welfare, I don't care how good you are. It says you're not- <laughs> So that's the first issue I have. Uh, right. The second issue, then, is just how you actually maneuver the conversation in a way that benefits everybody. But anyway, you're not even selling what you're talking about anymore. So what's the point? No, but I, I wanted to help because in those types of, of cases, if I ever come across, um, and I think a lot of it had to do with marketing. There there were certain clients that would, so, would be sold, but they were emotionally there by the time they got to the office. And obviously, not every client's going to be like that. But I mean, by far, that was that was something I wanted advice on, because I was like, how could anyone, you know, what's the what's the right frame to go on some of these? Yeah, the right frame is is to double down on duty field that what we're doing is going to get them there. Besides, obviously, the investment. Now they're going to say yes. Now we've got to bring the investment back in and then we've got to understand what's actually the problem with the investment. The investment is probably too much, too large, too quick. Uh, which obviously is a marketing issue, but then how do I actually overcome the objection? Okay. Gotcha. All right, cool. Who else got some more? I want to base it on urgency, guys. If you have questions on urgency, please do let me know and I'll show you what I mean or how it works. Ross, what's going on with you, party boy? You got a question? Going on my phone. Hey, Bill. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I kind of just have. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm listening, you know, on this. And uh, yeah. what are you saying? Yeah, you, Sorry, go for it. I sell a, a lead generation service, so I do get a lot of um, people that are more like logistically concerned about being able to afford it right now, since there's a large upfront fee. And they're usually wanting to wait for a couple of closings until they can cover that fee and get things moving. So, I mean, I do hear like the follow up with me after a closing type of thing quite a bit. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense, you know, and you got to, again, bring that to the fruition of the conversation of them having the outcome, you know, like if they're not closing deals at the moment, how are they ever going to close deals in order to be able to afford what it is that they actually need today? This makes no logical sense. It's kind of like someone saying to you, I want to lose five pounds before I go and lose the 20 pounds that I need. It makes no logical sense, does it? So with all due respect, you feel that what we do do here can actually get you in a position where you can make the money that you want to make. What are they going to say? Yes. Well, I do hear them say yes a lot to it. I mean, it's, it becomes pretty cut and dry for them, yeah. you know, through Is the demo. That yes. they... Yeah, we'll say yes. This? Well, yeah, well, it's just a, an agreement. For yeah, them to be able to, yeah. it's just a throwaway of yeah, 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 yeah. And say yes, but it doesn't mean anything. Anyone have kids here? Yeah, when you tell your kid, don't stand on the table, you walk out of the room, you come back, where are they doing? You're like, you said yes, you weren't going to stand on the table. I come back and you're upside down with your nappy on your head, standing on the table, pissing on all the conflicts. So, <laughs> We got to have it as solid yes, because if it's not a solid yes and they don't believe and they don't double down on it, you're always going to get spun out. Make sense? I would like to see a call if I could ever from you and I'll literally show you exactly what's going on. What are you saying, Bill? 
I would like to see a call from you in any way, shape, or form, and I will literally be able to show you exactly what's going on. Okay. You want me to send you a call, you're saying? I don't mean right now, this minute, or send no. me, I mean, like, if you ever jump on another call and you want me to see something, I can see it 100%. And I'll show you exactly okay. what's going on. So next time I go live, bring a call, and I can show you. Okay. Okay. Fair deal. Thank you. Okay. All right, coolio, coolio. Fabian, what's going on with you, party boy? Doing great, listening in um, on the go to find an offer now because uh, I got the thing in man, the North Star future pace and uh, um, consequence now settled in a kind of way that I feel comfortable to start. Yeah. What is your uh, thoughts on an offer? Anyone mm -hmm. in the pipeline or anything like that? No, I just um, go on Instagram, search for coaches, and then start uh, sending video DMs. Okay, how is that working out for you? I'm just starting. I just got through like what I want to say, and now today I start producing the videos. Okay, how long did it take you to figure out what you wanted to say? Uh, I had some help, so not long. Two days, five days, ten weeks? What do you mean? What I mean is like you had a call from the thoughts to the actions to getting on a call, how long is that process? The reason why I'm saying that, buddy, is because a lot of people, who, not just saying you in general, but I'm saying like people that are coach and train, mm -hmm. who tell me that they're busy, but when I actually break it down and I actually say, well, what are you doing? Guess what they're doing? Zero. I didn't say that, you said that, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. The reason why you said zero is because that's what's probably going on. Like we yeah. we get ourselves in a position where we tell ourselves we're doing the right things, but unfortunately, it's the outcome and it's the results which is going to take whether we're doing the right things. You know, so I will challenge you to get out there and actually connect and build and get into offers as quickly as you can in any capacity that you can, because that's how you're going to learn and that's how you're going to earn. All right. All right, cool. Let's go one or two more guys based on urgency and then we can wrap up if you need to. I just want you guys to understand what urgency actually is and how to actually gather it and get it. Fred Fox. Good morning. Good morning. Good. Are you behaving yourself? Trying. Trying. I love it. Okay, anyone else? Any other questions? Let's go for it. No, easy peasy. That was easy. Can I ask all of you, why do you feel it's hard to get urgency on your calls? Like, where do you feel the missing, the missing, the missing link is? We all know what we want to get, but there's a difference between wanting it and getting it. Where do you all feel? that you're not getting or that you're not able to? Like, where's the missing piece? Because that's what I want to help you on. Hmm. This is a good question, wasn't it? Now everyone is gone looking into the abyss. Oh. For, for myself, the missing piece is, is coming. I think I'm not generating enough of the consequence building that it's allowing them to say, yeah, I can, I can put this off and I, I can delay on, on making this decision. So I'm not building that urgency. I think that's a result of, of not coming through that gap. Okay, but why? Not necessarily, I don't, wanna, I don't want you to tell me the problem that you have. I want to understand why you have the problem. Because why is more important than having? I don't think I'm asking the right questions um, and, and that's where it's coming from. Okay. Um, when we get into talking about some of the inaction consequences yeah. i'm getting of surface level answers about uh well you know like i'm i'm just go to a different firm and that's okay with me and i don't think i'm digging enough in the right way to, to understand why that's not acceptable to them mm -hmm. okay okay good anyone else yeah i think that for me too like it comes from their feedback from the questions, like them kind of not wanting to answer them a lot of times too, or being, um, you know, them feeling like impatient, like trying to answer those, like maybe like they're feeling like they're being patronized a little bit. Okay. 
so you're like you keep asking the same question over and over again instead of changing the tune and how to ask it is that what you mean or you keep like pecking at them in one particular way and they're getting chewed off and then they feel that as you say patronized and then it's a well, case of well mean? them kind of feeling confused by the questioning so instead of getting like a presentation or a demo they're they're wondering why i'm digging into those um like topics like or why it would make sense for them to want to explain those things to me okay so i will try and do my best to explain exactly what you're saying so basically you're dealing with business owners who want to have more leads x y and z now you're going into the conversation based on their future pace or where they want to be and you're doing it in an emotional standpoint you're asking how would it feel when you make x would that be fair to say or what do you feel how would it feel for your kids when you're making more money this kind of stuff is that what you're asking or like what's what's yeah i i would say like you know, questions like that I mean, they, they tend to get, a, they're like, oh, well, that's why I'm here, you know, like, so what do you do? You know, it would be like, yeah, if they're yeah. like feeling like impatient, you know, like, yeah, I want my kids to have a better life or whatever, you know? Yeah. Okay. I'll explain this. Okay. So what's happening here now, guys, and this is probably for a lot of your offers is they're coming in. Are they coming in to talk about their family or they're coming in to talk about their business? Their business. Or what do you think, Russ? you're the one the problem what are they coming in to talk about they're coming in to talk about lead generation for their business not for the family now you're having a business conversation until you hit the future pace aspect of conversations and that's minute you turn it from a logistical business standpoint into an emotional standpoint and it just completely shifts the whole dynamic of the conversation yeah problem that that's happening is that every part of this process you're not dripping in emotional questions Emotional questions are not necessarily, tell me how you're going to feel when your whole life changes and all this kind of stuff. I mean, like, gripping in that you want to obviously talk about other things rather than cost per leads, cost per acquisitions, follow-up sequences, blah, blah, blah. Those are all logistical issues of a problem that they have, which is that not making enough money. Now, you want to have a conversation based on that, but you also want to have a conversation based on what it actually does for them. I'm going to do with you right here, right now. So when I get you to a position, Russ, when you're making an extra 25000 every single month in your business, what does that look like? Play along with me, I'll show you. Russ, you've got to play along with me. I can't speak to myself. I'm sorry, I missed, the, I missed your, the question part of it. it so the know, question is basically this. When I get you to 25000 every single month, this is way maybe what the one I don't really know. What does that actually look like? We get you 25,000 extra leads every single month and you're making all the money under fucking God's gift of this earth. What does that look like? What does that look like? Okay. Yeah. I mean, do you want me to play? You want me to play along on this? No, Sorry, I don't want to play along on myself. Come on, play along, buddy. Captain okay. on Get with it. All right. So that would look like, I mean, my kids being able to, I mean, have spent more time with, with your kids. kids. That's the first issue that you have now because you're not playing the typical business owner. You're never going to add with your emotions when I ask you a logistical question. So that's the first issue. And you're like, think of what is going on. So your questions, okay? I asked you a logical question about your business. You're not going to talk about your kids. It's just not going to happen. So when I ask you a logical question about your business, answer it like you would if you were the business owner. And I'm going to show you how to move it back into an emotional question with the family. Okay. All right. So yeah, um, twenty five thousand dollars added to my business would just give me some, you know, the the kind of freedom to buy new products for my business. Uh, maybe just, I mean, bring in more clientele, yeah. be able to um, take a vacation yeah. when I want to. Maybe buy a couple of things that I want for myself. Okay, cool. So what we're getting here now, guys, is if you can all actively listen, you're getting, you're going to get time, money, and freedom. What I've just got now is freedom and time. OK, but the money allowed the time and the, and the freedom to come into it. Now, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to go down the rabbit hole with the logistics of the business and then I'm going to live back to the family. Let's say I just did all that. Now I'm going to live back to the family. OK, that means absolutely fantastic. It's brilliant that you want to do that. I'm just rushing through this. When you do want to go and take holidays, like who do you want to go with? Like, what do you want to do? I want to go somewhere warm. Okay. Uh, definitely somewhere that's got a beach. Uh, I want to go with my family. You know, take my wife and my kids to doing that. So, can you not do uh, that at the moment, or do you have what's to? That? Can you not necessarily do that as often as you want to at the moment, or like because I know you mentioned to me that the business does require you to be in it like 
most days, you know? Right. Uh, yeah, I'm not, just not able to take it as often as I want. You know, business starts to get a little bit, you know, unexpected things happen. Yeah. Um, and then I find that I'm, you know, moving the vacation off to the, to the next month and then just kind of continues to cascade from there. Next month and next month and next month and so on and so forth until never ever end, right? I would feel and to know as a business that it is actually take care of yourself and that you can actually pour it back into your family and actually have those memories with your kids because with all the respect for us your kids are growing as well as your business right right yeah. i would feel then to know that you can actually take that out and that time to actually have with the kids before they do get too old because mine are getting old too and i have to actively do that every single day too I imagine it would feel good. I mean, I would want to be in that position of having that type of control over my, uh, over I my business. <laughs> I want to be a billionaire. I want to make all the money under the sun. I want to help a world of people. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to do it. Because the yeah. other side of the world, who's in control of this? You are, aren't you? Because you own and run your business, correct? Mm -hmm. So everyone see what we're trying to do here now? Everyone see how we're like having logical conversations, but I'm living it back to the family. And how did I create urgency? Can someone tell me how I created urgency and just in that little speed right there? Now I can go deeper and deeper and deeper while I'm just trying to speed this up because I got to go pick up my kid. How did I create urgency, Russ, in the conversation just briefly? I would say by making me feel as though I have the responsibility to, to do that. Okay. I mean, I, I did feel like my own like taking like accountability aspect of it, like increasing, like yeah. as the questions were like, well, I felt more of the responsibility shift for me to do something for me to yeah. act on it, but more of like, yeah, from like an emotional awesome. standpoint. Okay. Who else, where else did we see that? I created a little bit of urgency and drop some things in. Yeah. You, you told him that his, his kids are growing. Yeah. He has li limited time with them. And then you, you helped him realize that he's in control. Yeah, exactly right. Because my kids are growing, which ultimately means that I'm telling the truth. And he knows that. And that's why he's starting to believe and understand that the responsibility is on him. So I can't have a business conversation and I can loop it back down based on the answers that he gives me into a family capacity, which allows me to build urgency, which allows me to have an emotional conversation. But it also allows me to loop back, making a business decision so we can have what he wants in terms of a family understanding. Everyone see that? Yeah. See how we can go and play both games at the exact same time and have them both complement each other. That's a big issue that I see with an awful lot of salespeople is they don't know how to have both conversations and they don't know how to connect them together. Now I can keep going with you and I can keep putting you in the position and I can keep pouring into you so you take the decision. Believe me, when I get to the end and I pitch and I say, does this feel like exactly what's going to get you to where you want to go or heading to it? You're going to say yes. And you're going to have very, very little ob objections because I poured into a future pace consequence and I pitched you exactly what's going to allow you to have what you want. That's how you make sales. It's how you get people out of the wrong way. It's how you create urgency and build people up so they can take control of their lives. See how that would obviously steer you in the right direction, Russ? Yeah. yeah, I do. And I have that same problem that you just described, you know, with being able to connect those two logical and emotional aspects of it. I know. You know, that's that's where I'm missing that. Yeah. And believe me, a lot of my guys that come in uh, have the exact same problem because they don't know how to connect the dots. Because there are two different conversations, but how do you connect them in a way that doesn't sound weird or creepy? Or, right. as you said, patronize people. Right, because that's, yeah, that, that would be the other. It's, it's touchy, you know, like when you start talking about the business and the family part of it in a way, you know, that's coming from a stranger to them. Yeah, it's weird if you don't do it right. Yeah. It's kind of like you're having a lovely conversation with your wife. Everything is great. Next minute, you slap her in the bum and she's like, where did that come from? We were like, we were at a funeral. We were having like, you know, X, Y, and Z. It just, it just doesn't align with the situation of where you are. So you got to be able to play both parts and be able to connect them. That's the issue. All right. Does everyone Thank you. see what we just done? Anyone, any questions on that?
how many do you feel like how many of you feel that if you were able to have those two conversations you would be able to make sense because what you sell us is fucking like it's logistical but it also is like the logistics ultimately lead to everything else time money and freedom it allows them to have the money they want, which allows them to have the freedom they want, which allows them to have the time that you want to use with the freedom. So you may think that you're having a business conversation, but I can spin your dial until you're having a conversation and you're not good enough and you're not being the best parent that you ever wanted to be and it's all your fault. But then I'm going to pour into you so you actually make a conscious decision that you are going to be the best parent and you are going to have the best business. Because everything resolves around what? Everything revolves around who? Me, I, what am I doing? Who am I? When am I? Yeah. Okie dokie. Right. If you want any more info on anything we do, just let me know, guys. This stuff we do all day, every day, inside, upside down, all around. Lots of people are losing the ball every single day because they don't know what they're doing. And it's not me being disrespectful. It's just the reality. Ooh. All right. Gotta go. See you later. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bill.